Hi, just a little announcement quick. Uh, every week we we make a YouTube Fridays. Get, sometimes it comes out Friday night. And if you don't get it, go to our YouTube. Things are getting very strange. I have you noticed there's a lot of things going on. And Roberta Morrison 2, the number 2, uh, the second channel we have up. And then we are all livinginhispresence.org, also on Vimeo. So I wanted to quick do a little one from Ireland, a little, e a little email we got. Isn't it fun to hear from Ireland? I just love to hear from which country and if you're still hearing me around the world because we're seeing a lot of things happening, aren't we? <coughs> I'm not going to go into that, but she just wanted to thank us for our messages, uh, much eye-opening information on what's truly happening in the world. She's been watching for quite a few years. I've spent much time listening to the older teachings, and I re recommend that. Go back to those uh, while they're still up. And I bought the book of on signs and symbols. Anything you can get on signs and symbols, that's another whole way that um, these people identify who they are. And when you see who they are, even on Christian books, when I see that sun emblem, God, I threw a ton of books away of people I thought were, were good, and I found out that they were, uh, what do you call it, pretenders or infiltrators. So... Uh, so clearly spent many hours, she can tell we research, and she belongs to a good church in the Bible, but they do not teach awareness of what is happening in the world regarding the agendas. And that's, that's the thing that saddens me so much is because people are like, well, why are you suppressed? Or why are you going through this? Because my pastor, he's a mega church pastor, and he can say whatever he wants. Well, they don't touch on the things that are not uh, supposed to be talked about. And these agendas, which I've talked about before, what is all this leading into is slavery, really. The freedoms that we once have, and, and we still do at, at this point, uh, more and more as we see these other agendas coming in, Agenda 2030, Agenda 2050, uh, if they get their way. And so that's why today's a good day. We have to keep rejoicing that we are, we are enjoying our time right now until more and more of these things happen. And we know what's happening at the border. I was going to bring my Hoya plant down here and tell you, it's growing. The vines are growing up. And it's just like the Hoya is growing on the news too. Uh, right and left, fight, fight, gaslighting, all this stuff that I've talked about before. And I want to do a real quick review before we get into uh, tonight's message about uh, the destabilization of a nation or controlled demolition. Just to see if you sense any of this going on. I'm gonna give this, I gave it last week, but I'm gonna give it again. Expanding government spending to get rid of the country's money as wastefully as possible. In other words, national debt. The national debt just keeps getting, I think we're at 70, 37 trillion now. Higher taxes, higher taxes, higher taxes. Inflation of our currency takes more of it to buy less. Uh, control of prices, wages, material to supposedly combat inflation. Greatly inc uh, increase the control of our economy and our everyday lives. More control, big control. Elimination of the borders. Uh, this is all by design, this border thing. I'm not going to go into that right now, but this, this is part of the new. The old system has to go away and be destroyed, and they're bringing in their new system, their new governing, all these things. Elimination of borders, lines of states, educational system has taken over. This is all still on destabilizing a nation. It doesn't matter which nation. They do rinse and repeat. This is something that they've practiced over the, oh, they wouldn't do that. Well, the Bible says that there's evil men. There's a synagogue of Satan, right? And there's merchants of the earth. And we see in the book of Revelation that all these things are talked about. And educational system has taken over. Constant hammering of certain terms like freedom, freedom cities. Uh, oh, it's not 15-minute cities. If I get elected, I'll make freedom cities. They're the same thing. And that's what I said. There's two paths to some of the same agendas. Don't be deceived. Because this is a huge Hoya. Oh, yeah. That's all I can say. <laughs> and don't be deceived. 
Don't be deceived. Choose to know what's going on. Uh, the same words, freedom, safety, scientific. Um, the country eventually will surrender to its free will to so-called all this freedom to create a civil war with military might is also part of the destabilization of a nation. Are we there yet? And then lastly, what I shared last week was uh, in destabilization, uh, there's a book out for ages, it's called The Art of War, Know Your Enemy, Sun Taz, TZU. The rules of war, see if this is going on in any of your countries, cut off supply chains, hit the fuel lines, destroy wealth, disarm the citizens, affect transportation, silence important communications. Like, uh, you can't say that, because it's not going along with the narrative. And if you're going along and saying this, it goes against what the narrative is. Silence important communications. Create diseases. Cause strife and divisions. This is all in the art of war. Create strife and divisions. Insert lies, confusion, and propaganda. And then it's problem, reaction, solution. Make yourself look like the savior. Coming in and, and the words that we have is we have Jesus as our savior. <laughs> uh, beware of the leaven of Herod. I'm not going to into all that, but this is what we're going through now is we are, Jesus warned us about the leaven of Herod and about the Pharisees, the religious movements and also Herod. So those are two biggies that he warned us about that you don't hear much, but we are still in that battle. So tonight we want to talk a little bit about, um, in Matthew 24, you can turn there if you want. <clears throat> when you have time, read this whole chapter. <clears throat> but Jesus said in verse 4, Take heed that no man deceive you. And that was going to be the sign of his coming in the end of the world. And so there's going to be much deception. They're going to have people coming in his name saying, I am, or not. It's just amazing to me the mockery of Christianity that's going on. And we've watched some of these older shows and the mockery of Christians and uh, it's just like in plain sight, they're just, it's, it's causing so much doubt on the Bible. And if you aren't strong and fixed in these days, you could end up being shaken. And so make sure you're fixed, your heart is fixed. We're gonna close with Psalms 112. Our heart is fixed trusting in the Lord, and we are not afraid. But expect this, expect um, spiritual warfare as these end times increase. And then he said, you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places. Why is that? Because the technology now is beyond what you can imagine. That's all I'll say. The weather is now warfare. And all these things are the beginning of sorrows. Uh, then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for what? For my name's sake. This is persecution. But in verse 10 is where we want to land today. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And then the rest is really good too. But in verse 13 it says, he that endure until the end, the same shall be saved. And the gospel of the kingdom has to be preached and so that's what we're trying to do. This is the most important thing we can do right now is to preach the gospel to the end and make sure that our hearts are fixed on the Lord and that we get our hearts right with him and make sure that it, no matter what happens, we're ready spiritually. That's the most important thing. But while we're going through this world, there's going to be sorrow. He said here, right here, there's going to be sorrow and there's going to be betrayal. And I want to talk a little bit about betrayal and some other things that people are going through. Jesus went through them. And on this journey of life, there's things that we have to deal with. And so many people don't want to deal with real issues. They want to, oh, everything's positive. Uh, and as a result of this positive message that hit probably what, I don't know, in the 70s, 80s, 90s, I don't know what, this whole positive thing, people have become less uh, empathic in churches. They're, they're not caring. They don't 
take care of each other. When they're going through stuff, they just like snap out of it, have faith. What's wrong with you? You know, they, they died. Well, they're in heaven now. Well, there's a process of grieving that we have to go through. And if you don't grieve, you're gonna, it's going to come out sideways in a different way. I've experienced that when my mom died. I didn't know how to grieve. I didn't know how to deal with it. We didn't talk about it. And then you don't deal with it properly. I was just a kid. So when my dad died, I've talked about this before, I grieved, I pre-grieved every time I saw him and I'd see the difference in him. And he was, so that when he finally did die, it's still hard. Death is the worst. I mean, it's, it's hard. But you have to know how to deal with losses. And we're going to talk about that. Betrayal and losses. Two of the end time signs that Jesus tells us that's going to happen. And people are going to betray one another. And um, they betrayed Jesus, and they're going to betray you, and they're going to betray us. So we're not alone, and we can get through it, but it's, it's, it's not an easy snap, mix water, and we're free. It's a process. Death is a process. When you lose somebody, it's, it's harder than you can imagine. We're going to talk about that just a little bit. But a merry heart, in Proverbs 15, 13, says, doeth good like a medicine. It's good to be happy. It's good to be joyful. But a broken spirit drieth the bones. But by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. And that word there in the Hebrew, mean, in the sorrow, it means grief, suffering or torment, pain of the heart. We go through things, and because we still have emotions, and we have a mind, we have memories, we have things that we go through, life can be very challenging. And in the church, they haven't really been helpful on how to deal with certain subjects that we, we live. It's reality. And they want you to live in denial that, oh, you know, they went to heaven, so, you know, don't be sad. You're still going to be sad. Yes, it's better off for them. But you know what? You lost something, and you have to learn to say goodbye. I have to say goodbye to the things I lost. And it's okay to grieve. You have to grieve. It's, I went to a funeral. Actually, I was doing a funeral, and I, I let everybody know, we're here to grieve. We're not here to just celebrate the life of, well, you do that too, but they act like grieving is like a sin. They always grieved in the Old Testament. They had sackcloth and ashes. They learned how to grieve. They learned how to feel, you know, cry with each other and uh, let, let the other person, let them let grieve. So by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. So when grief seizes your heart, or you, you can call it brokenhearted. When you get brokenhearted, something bad happens, grief hits that heart, or when the heart's sad, uh, it, affects, it affects you. I don't care how strong of a walk with God you have, it's going to affect you because you're still human. You still have emotions. You can prepare yourself uh, for losing a, a parent is really hard. I can't imagine losing, I haven't lost any siblings yet. But I know that that's really hard. Um, I have three of them right now that are older than I am that are all going through some really health challenges. And it's hard to even watch that. It's hard to see people hurting and you feel like you can't fix them, right? So Jesus was betrayed by Judas, an, an enemy that's masquerading as a friend. Judas, you know, because of the betrayal, People don't even call their kids. I don't know. Do they? Have you ever heard of, come here little Judas. Have you ever heard of <laughs> Judas? I made a terrible mistake when I was preaching in California back in the day when I used to preach a lot to different places. Um, I didn't know people called their kids Delilah. Um, I just, I was preaching on something, Samson and Delilah, and I just kind of said, well, nobody called, and this lady came up, she goes, my name is Delilah. And <clears throat> my sister has a grandchild named Delilah. So this is a popular name. So this doesn't, if you have a grandchild named Judas, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, I've uh, got my foot stuck right there, don't we? Um, do you know what I mean? There's certain things that you just kind of think, that's betrayal, that's uh, some, certain names mean certain things. So... A Judas is usually an enemy masquerading as a friend in the Bible, okay? So it's the breaking of trust or confidence when someone betrays you. Uh, 
beings were telling funny stories tonight. I might as well tell you a story. Okay, this was when I was very young. I think I was 16. And my sister rented, we lived in Brainerd, and my sister rented a cabin. Back then you didn't have phones, but it was word of mouth. So I don't know how many people came to this party. My, my sister had this party. And so a lot of my friends came and her friends came and it became quite a big party. Well, this one guy came that was in my class that was really having trouble, even at this early age, with drugs. And I've always been the little counselor, you know, trying to help people get, and so I wanted him to get off of drugs. He was so high that night. And I, I don't know how I started talking to him. I don't remember all the details. But all I remember was that he had a whole bunch of powder and I, I don't even know what it was at the time. I just knew it was drugs. It was bad. So I said, give me all your drugs. So me and the, my girlfriend, uh, I said, give me all these drugs. And I said, I'm going to get rid of them for you. We're not going to, you know, so, so he gave them to me. So I went out and I buried them. And the only person that knew where I buried them was Colleen. I still remember her name. And so we buried him so that, he, you know, he, and he was free that night. Well, I don't know what happened, but something happened. I don't know if he had to pay somebody or if he, I don't remember what it was, but I had to go back to that site to dig him up and they were gone. This Colleen betrayed me. She went up and dug up those drugs and she gave them away. And I knew who she gave them to, too, another guy that was really on drugs. I just felt so betrayed. And that's the first, I was thinking, if I have, how many stories have I, could I tell them, share with them about betrayal? I'm sure you all have had betrayal stories. And in church, people get hurt in church. And just because you go to church doesn't mean you're not going to be betrayed in church. Because people are people, right? So betrayal is hard. It's painful. Because you trusted someone and they totally you know, broke your confidence, broke your trust. So this is going to be what's happening. Many shall be offended and many shall betray one another. In the end times, you think somebody's your friend. Somebody, maybe it's a pastor you trusted in. And all of a sudden you find out stuff comes out about this. Or maybe it was someone that we so-called selected. And all of a sudden now you see that the very people we thought were going to be for us and help us are part of the other uh, team that is destabilizing our, our nation and our country. It's a huge betrayal of what's going on because a lot of these countries have joined together to bring in these new things and no one's talking about it. So the ones that do talk about it, they think you're nuts, you're, you know, just want to be negative or whatever. And then you feel betrayed because you're trying to tell truth and no one wants to believe you. And you tell truth, and it was reminding me today of, um, I was reminded of the uh, sower sows uh, the word, and how Jesus must have felt when he was trying to preach, and he said some f fall on good soil, some bad, some the cares of the world choke it out. And that's what's happening. There's so many people that don't want to hear truth because they're already dealing with stuff. They don't want to hear anything, but they're not going to be prepared, and they don't know who their enemy is. And they're so afraid, and they're letting the media and the propaganda totally put fear porn, fear porn. And God's not called us to live in fear, right? But the enemy wants, that's one way they manipulate you is through fear. To herd you to do this, do with this, you know, wear five diapers, protect yourself, uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay? So many shall be offended. We've all been offended. That was my first heartbreak of offense. I trusted somebody and I thought we were on the same page and she totally turned on me and actually this guy and gave away his stuff. I don't know if she sold it or what, but that's all on her. But they shall betray one another. And what they're doing now is people coming in groups. And this is why I say, have your group. Know who your group is. And... I don't know if this is a time to have a whole lot of people in your inner group right now, but many people are flagging videos. They're reporting videos. They're reporting on their neighbors. They're, they did this way back in Germany. This, everything is repeating. And uh, this one guy, he has great videos out, but someone's always reporting him and g getting his strikes and this and that because someone's doing this that's acting like a subscriber, but they're attacking him. So... It's huge betrayal. 
And you don't even know who these people are because they hide behind their walls, you know? So betrayal is a deliberate act of disloyalty or deceit towards someone who trusts and depends on you. You're, you're supposed to be depending, and then all of a sudden you're these double agents. We watch these shows, and it's just like, you know, like the old James Bond. Doesn't he ever get it that the women are always another agent? I mean, is this guy ever going to learn his lust? And he always takes him over, and he doesn't have a brain, you know? So many times this happens over and over and over again, and he gets betrayed over and over again. <coughs> and they're so easy to seduce. I mean, it's just like, really? <laughs> but betrayal is, in real life is devastating and it's painful, but in real life, a lot of these stories really are true. There's double agents everywhere. There's, I won't go into it. But anyway, David in Psalms 55, 12, he said, and we believe this, he's talking about Ahithophel here. Ahithophel was uh, his counselor. He walked with Ahithophel. And Ahithophel turned his back on David and he joined his rebellious son Absalom's team. So David was feeling very betrayed here. If an enemy were insulting me, I could have endured it. Verse 12, if a foe were raising himself against me, I could hide from him. But it is my companion, my close friend, with whom I once enjoyed sweet fellowship. It really hurts when you used to be friends with someone and something happened. I just want to say, there's a lot of things that are going around. You're not going to agree with everyone on anything, on everything. But you have to decide the hill you're going to die on. There's some things that really don't matter. It's like, okay, we can disagree with that. There's no reason for um, friendships to break over stupid stuff. You know, well, you have to believe the way I do because if, if you don't believe the way I do, I'm not going to be raptured because I have to have faith that I have to go in rapture. Really, it, it's your faith that's going to make you go into the rapture? No, we have to trust in the Lord. He said he's coming again. Just be ready. Yeah. Be ready because otherwise you're going to have this escape mentality that you're, you'll never be ready because you just don't think anything bad will happen. Bad things have happened throughout the whole world. And in, in the United States, people think nothing ever is going to bad happen here. Bad things are happening here. They're already happening here. So what do we do? We keep our eyes on the Lord. We stay filled. We walk, endure to the end, no matter what. It's not something you need to fight over. Okay, you believe that, and we believe this, and we believe that. I've never really ever taught on all that stuff because you know what? It's same, same with the flat earth or round earth. It doesn't matter. It, it is what it is. And I'm not going to change it. And if you believe that way, I don't care. If I believe that, those things don't matter. Um, the deception in the matrix is very real. Uh, most people are shocked of the inversion. They've been inverting males to females and females for centuries. This has been going on for years and years and years. They're just bringing it out in the public now. People can't handle that. I'm sorry you can't handle it. It still makes it true. It doesn't make it false. Just because you don't believe it. You don't see it. You don't know it. It's there. We're not going to fight over it, right? The whole point is there are some things that I will fight to the death on. You have to decide where your mark is. There's some things that don't matter. We can get along. We can fellowship. It's not a major thing. But backstabbing, and I had a terrible situation with um, some board members years ago that broke my heart. They weren't honest with me, so they sent a letter. It was just, it was terrible. It was like one of the worst things that have ever happened because they weren't honest. They were disloyal, loyal, and they were betrayers. To me, I will always stand in that position. And that's not how you deal with things. You talk to people. You resolve what you can. And there's some things you just choose, you know what? We don't agree but we don't have to be disagreeable because that's not a major thing. Jesus said he's coming again. He's coming again. Are you ready? And then he says the biggest thing is going to be deception. Are you letting a man deceive you? Let no man deceive you. Don't put your confidence and trust in a bunch of Hoya because that's what's going to happen. They're all going to promise you this and promise you that, and these roads are leading to these agendas. These things have been signed and sealed for a long time. And what do we do? We trust the Lord. That's all we can do is trust God. Trust him with our families, with our parents, with our grandkids. Our, do what you can. But there's some things, you know what, you're, we're just going to have to walk through. We're just going to have to walk through. Some through the fire, some through the flood, but all through the blood, right? 
<sighs> guess I got that out. Some things aren't worth fighting for. The devil wants you offended. He wants you offended over this stupid stuff. Walk in love towards people. Let them believe what they want. Just let some stuff go. Tell truth to people that want to hear it. There's a lot of people. I was telling my son, I said, yeah, your daughter's going to be this way because now I know some stuff. You know, the older you get, you know stuff. But the kids, even though they're in their 40s or whatever, they don't think you know anything. But you've learned stuff. You've grown. There's things I changed my opinion on that I didn't um, believe when he was growing up. I'd change it now. The whole prosperity message, the whole word of faith, NER, the whole thing, that's gone with me. I'm done with all that stuff. I've been through it. I see through it. And then you see, oh, I raised them in this. This is going to be hard for them to come out of. This is all they know. And millions of people are like this. They're just like, I, would, I did the best I could. I didn't realize that this was Gnosticism. We didn't know, but we know now. All you can do is what you can do now. Right? And when they want to hear, I told him, I said, when you're, he was going to buy his house. I, I've studied this. I said, the um, uh, what, utilities are going to go sky high. Yep. I saw this was the plan years ago. Be careful when you buy something because you know what? It's not just the house. The utilities are going to go up. They want to get rid of all this other stuff and go, everything's got to go green, right? This is no matter who gets put in where, these things are going to still happen. So keep your eyes on Jesus. He's the one that saved us. He's the one that's going to walk us through this valley. Maybe I should just close right now. <laughs> Nothing's going the way I kind of thought it was. So anyway, here's David. He was betrayed by Ahithophel. And he was deeply, deeply hurt. And when we find out the people that we thought were on our party that were going to help us, we just thought the other party was bad, but we didn't realize that all parties have been affected, right? So you feel betrayed. There's a betrayal. There's a, a, a sense of loss. David betrayed Uriah. So here David got betrayed, but he, he betrayed Uriah. When he had an affair with his wife, he put Uriah on the front lines to kill him to cover his own sin. And that's what people do too. He might have been betrayed, but he's also a betrayer. Betrayal leaves us wounded. Today, the leaven of Herod, the merchants of the earth, what did Jesus warn us about? What did he get really mad about? He took the whip to cleanse the temple of the money changers. We are going to have a big shift in the banker boys, and they've always been part of the problem, right? So you're going to feel there's coming, I believe, in the, in the future. Huge betrayal on some of these things that we've always trusted in. And what does the Bible say? Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. And I don't like it any more than you do. I don't even like talking about it. But there's heartache and, sour, sour, <laughs> heartache and sorrow. Um, my mind is going faster than my mouth can keep up. <coughs> So we have betrayal and, and loss. I want to talk a little bit about loss. And I say that because people are losing things. They're losing their jobs. They're losing their health. They're losing their parents. They're losing their kids. They're losing a lot of different things. In this world, we face sorrow and loss. Loss is a constant companion through life. We're taught to be winners. So you know what? We are ashamed if we lose something. We think it's our fault. Loss isn't fair. Something has ended. It's a permanent change. We must grieve over our losses. Learn to grieve. Don't deny it and don't stuff it. Men really have a hard time dealing with their emotions because they were taught, be tough. But when you lose something, you have to allow yourself to grieve. Tears are God's gift to us to release our feelings. Tears are not a sign of weakness, lack of faith, and I don't need to be fixed or counseled. I'm hurting. I've lost something, and I'm grieving. I'm saying goodbye. Give yourself permission to grieve and face the loss. If you don't, if you deny it, 
you drag it out, you get stuck. And you can always tell when you're stuck or someone else is stuck because they're angry. It's not worth being angry, even over betrayal. I've had to work through it. You have to work through it. Um, do I ever want these people back as friends? No, but I'm not bitter. I've forgiven them. You have to work. It's work to study, to show yourself approved, to, to forgive someone when you really want vengeance. You just really want them to just fly off the earth, you know? We all go through it, but you have to uh, realize life is full of breakups and change. Life is full of breakup and change. And I, when I got saved, I thought everyone would be friends forever. Everybody just believed the same. I just thought the devil was out there. We're all against, you know, we're all on the same team. Uh, wow. Uh, going to church and being a minister in church really opens up your eyes. <laughs> wow. So an example of loss. A widow, I don't care if it's a guy or, you know, a woman, she's lost her mate or he's lost his wife but they've lost, they've lost a partner. They've lost more than just their husband or their wife. They've lost everything on that person. The handyman, the cook, the tax guy, the fixer-upper. The, there's so many losses just within that one loss that people see you a, a year later and go, snap out of it. You know, you lost your wife a year ago. You should be fine by now. They don't understand. The more you love something and the more attached you are to it, when that's gone, the loss is greater. And people don't teach on This should be taught in every church so that when someone loses someone, they know how to grieve. And we're supposed to help them. Weep with those that weep. Don't throw a get over it, they're in heaven uh, sentence. That doesn't help anything. Well, I know they're in heaven. Yes, but I'm hurting right now, and my heart's hurting, and I have to work through this. And give me time. Help me go through it. Be there for me. Just hug me. Sometimes you don't need any words. Just let me cry. Don't try to fix me. Don't try to confess over me. Let me grieve. And everyone grieves a little bit differently. We have to learn to say goodbye. Every loss needs the recognition that the connection is broken and now life's going to be different. I have three siblings that are going through things right now. Life will be different. It's just so nice to to call people whenever you want to call them. Even if you might not call them all the time, it's just nice to know they're there. That's the first thing I remember when my dad died. I called him all the time. And it was like I pick up the phone. Oh, he's not there now. Your life is different after that. And until you know that feeling, it's hard for you to empathize with someone else that's going through it. But when you've gone through something, you can really say, I'm going to give you the comfort that I had. The Lord comforted me through this, and I'm here to help you go through what you're going through. So now I have to live without it. There is no mix with water, and poof, you're fine. It's a process. Matthew 5, 4 said, Blessed are those that mourn, for they shall be comforted. To mourn means I'm letting go. And when you get betrayed, there's a letting go too. This one person I thought was my friend for 40 some years. I thought she was my friend. I thought she could. Then I hear stuff she was saying about me that she never came to me and asked me if this was so and so and so and so. Is this true? We heard this about. I'm like, what? That's not a friend. A friend is someone that sticks with you, right? So I had to mourn the loss of a person that I thought was a good friend for all these years. I guess I made her to be kind of a saint, and she wasn't. To mourn means we're letting go. And we all have to let go of things. We're all going to have situations, relationships that break up. Doesn't matter how spiritual you are, how much you try to be a good friend. It's called life. To comfort others, don't say, well, they're with the Lord. You shouldn't be sad. Don't cry. It's going to be fine. Just have faith. I loved it when they'd come and do this. They'd just tap you on the head and say, be healed. <sighs> when words fail... Tears are the messenger. No words. Let them flow. Tears are a language all their own. And that's why God gave them to us. In closing, Genesis 4, 42, 5. 
Joseph reunites with his brothers that betrayed him. He turned away, in verse 24, from his brothers and he began to weep. If you go through a huge betrayal, like he went through betrayal with his brothers, he wept. No words here. There were no words. Sometimes there are no words and you have to pour your heart out to the Lord. Nobody else can take it away. You have to learn. When I've been really hurting, I'd get on the floor and I would just cry it out. That's probably the only reason I'm still sane, even though you might not think I am. <laughs> Psalms 102. <laughs> Blessed is a man that feareth the Lord and delights in his commandments. Verse 7. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. What's evil tidings? The latest breaking news? I don't know if people are just doing these videos to just get more likes or whatever, but everything is warning, warning, breaking, breaking. Oh, this, it's just so much fear out there. This plan is going to hit you and you're going to die. This is going to happen. And this, um, don't let yourself be open to fear porn. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. So in this world there is betrayal, there is loss, but we have to fix our heart, trusting in the Lord. No one's going to come and save you. He already came to save us, right? So Father, we thank you. All those that are going through betrayal and loss, I can... I know the pain. I know the pain of all those things, and I know there's more to come as we lose things and as uh, some people die, as we so much stuff is happening in our world today. I lose two friends this week, two friends that week. This is so much is happening, so much chaos and confusion and uh, fear of civil war and all the things about the banks. And there's just one thing after another that could just cause us to to just be fearful. But you said, Father, if our heart's trusting in you, we have a peace, a peace that passes understanding. We should be fearful, but the peace of God, it protects us, it guides us, and it comforts us, comforts us. So we thank you for that peace, Lord. And no matter what, our heart is fixed trusting in you. We're not going to get off on all these little divisions and these ministers that want us to divide and fight. They're part of the problem. We want to keep our eyes fixed on you. Love each other as long as we can, not to betray each other's confidence and trust. We've all learned and grown through a lot of things. Sometimes we've shared things we shouldn't. Help us not be gossipers, Lord. Help us trust in you to the very end. He that endures to the end shall be saved. And everyone said? If you would like to see more messages from Roberta on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to her YouTube channel, Roberta Morrison, her backup channel, Roberta Morrison 2, and on the Living in His Presence Church website, where you can access the messages on the top center of the main webpage. There are free audio downloads of the messages. We are viewer supported. On the main webpage at the top right is a give button. Thank you for watching and see you next time.